Okay, this is Brian, and I'm back for another installment about physics in the time of social distancing. So I'm going to take a look at this basketball right here. And this is a night, it's called night bright basketball. And the idea is, during the daytime, or if I use an artificial light, I can take this ball and I can charge it up. And what I'm doing is I'm putting energy into molecules inside the ball. And then later, when it's dark, this energy will be released. This basketball has got a certain glow to it. This is a phenomenon known as phosphorescence. So I put energy in and then it's coming back out again in the form of emitted light. And you can see where the ball is glowing, where my hand was not blocking the light from reaching the ball. But here's the thing, when you charge up the basketball, when I'm trying to charge up the molecules in here to put the energy in, not any kind of light will do. If I take a really, really intense light source, this is a red laser pointer and it's very, very bright. If I take this red laser pointer and I draw on the basketball, what happens is nothing. The photon energies of the red laser pointer are about two electron volts. Two electron volts, individual photons do not have enough energy to make anything happen at an atomic scale. How about green? These have an energy of about two and a half electron volts. Very bright laser pointer. Nothing's happening. I can even take this laser pointer, which is breathtakingly bright. This is actually scary bright. And I shine it at the basketball, and what happens is nothing. There's a lot of energy coming out of here, but the individual photons at their 2.5 electron volts do not have enough energy to make anything happen. You're not able to affect individual molecules because individual photons don't have the punch that they need. But the ultraviolet, laser pointer, and this is actually just at the violet end of the spectrum. Um, these have an energy of about three electron volts. Three electron volt photons absolutely have enough energy to be able to charge up the phosphorescent material. And so this laser pointer is significantly dimmer than the others that I used, but the individual photons each have enough energy to make something happen. So the photon energy is crucial in determining how this radiation interacts with matter at an atomic scale. And this has lots of consequences. Um, we're going to talk about ionizing radiation in class, but now I want to dial it back and look at the other side of the spectrum. The red photons, energy of two electron volts, don't make anything happen. The sensors in the camera will respond to energies as low as about one electron volt. And so they can sense light that goes way beyond the red end of the rainbow into the infrared. And if we put on a special filter, the camera will only show the view in the infrared. I want to look at a couple of things. First off, I've got this board, and this board has got some nice colorful fabric on the front. And then I want to pay attention to my shirt, and I've got one of my fancy teaching shirts. This is the way things look in visible light. Now we're going to switch it and see how things look in the infrared. So in the infrared, you can actually see there's writing on this board beneath the fabric. It turns out the photons of the infrared are too low to be able to interact with the pigment. They don't even interact with the fabric. This fabric is transparent in the infrared. And you can see we wrote in black Sharpie a little message for you folks on the board. Um, crazy, crazy. And then my teaching shirt, which I discovered looking at it in the infrared, what I discovered was my teaching shirt is made out of two different pieces of fabric. The one side and the other look very different in the infrared. In the visible light, they're both black, but not so in the infrared. And the energy of the infrared photons is so low, it doesn't interact with some of the pigment molecules, but it does interact with others. And the world looks very, very different in this part of the spectrum. And we have a couple of other little video clips that you can take a look at related to this particular phenomenon. This whole idea of photons leads nicely into the next topic, which we're going to consider, which is the concept of quantum physics and quantization. So remember that. That's going to be our starting point for our next topic. I'll see you then.